The purpose of this tutorial is to start from the beginning and very quickly get you to a point where you understand PHP and can write your own scripts. Now it will be useful if you have at least some basic knowledge of HTML. I conveniently have a video on that if you are interested. So let's just take a quick look at what we're going to be learning today. First we need to install some software if you want to execute PHP files on your computer. If you already have a web server with PHP you can use that instead. Then we'll take a look at an actual PHP file and how to start programming in one. The first bit of code we'll look at will output a string. Now if you're not familiar with data types I'm going to try to teach you as we go. A string is just a sequence of characters. Another data type is an integer which is just a number, a whole number. And An example of where this matters you can do arithmetic on integers but not on strings. Uh, you can manipulate strings in other ways though. This includes concatenation which we'll look at after a quick introduction to variables. Uh, then we'll look at some operators, if statements, forms, arrays and loops. So before you can execute PHP files on your computer you'll need to install some software. If you are using a Mac you'll want to go ahead and download and install MAMP um, from mamp.info. If you are using Windows you will want WAMP from wampserver.com. Once you've installed that you'll find a folder has been created in OS X. It is under applications slash mamp slash htdocs. I believe in Windows it is just the root directory c slash wamp slash htdocs. The htdocs folder is used as the root directory of the local web server you've just installed. The control panel you get in OS 10 has a button to open the start page which will take you to this page you see here. Similarly you can get to a similar page from the icon in the system tray in Windows. You can then find your own projects by going to localhost, call on then the default port 8888 in this case, slash then the name of a folder you've set up in the htdocs directory. In a text editor, Notepad will do in Windows, I'm using Sublime Text 2 in OS X. We want to create an HTML file. So I'm going to quickly create a very simple structure. So we've got the, the HTML tags, the head tags, uh, we can have a title tag and then the body tags. So normally we would save this as a, a file with the, the .htm or .html extension. This will not be the case anymore, we're going to save it with the .php extension. So I'm going to call this file index.php. Now calling it index will make it a home page where browsers will automatically load that when you go to the directory. And I'm going to save this in the PHP tutorial folder that I've made in the htdocs folder. Going back to the web browser, when I refresh um, this PHP tutorial directory, instead of just listing the contents, it is going to load our new file which says hello world. The PHP comes inside a new tag in the HTML and what you want is the opening tag a question mark and the letters PHP and then a bit later on we need to close the tag with a question mark and the, the normal closing HTML tag. Now inside of these tags we can write some PHP code. First of all, I am going to show you the, the echo command. So typing echo and then in quotes to make a string, we can type a string. So I'm going to stick to hello world. So this is going to output the words hello world to the document. Now when a user loads a web page, the user doesn't see the PHP. It's, it's not possible to see the PHP code. The user can only see the output. And lines of code in PHP must always end in a semicolon. If you get an error, check you haven't missed semicolons. So when we save that, nothing is going to change um, because we're just outputting hello world. Now if we view the, the source code of this page, it's as though nothing has changed. The user can't see these PHP tags. They are executed on the server, the output is put in the HTML and then sent to the user. So echo outputs something to the screen. Very useful command. Don't forget the semicolon. So I mentioned variables in the introduction. A variable is just a way to, to store a piece of information and give it a name. And variables are denoted in PHP with a dollar sign. So we can write dollar, call it my uh, var for variable, and then we can make a string. Alternatively that could have been a number. Again, don't forget the semicolon. We can then output the variable, so we can type echo dollar my var. Refreshing the page, we will see our string has been outputted. PHP isn't very strict with data types. In the same way, I can create another variable and just set it equal to 5. Then I can create a, a second one and make that 3. We can then have a variable called sum, which is number plus number 2. And then we could output by typing echo sum um, 5 plus 3 
which will, as expected, give us 8. If, on the other hand, I tried to add this is my variable to the number 3, it's just going to output 3. It can't add a string to an integer. So how do we manipulate strings? We can concatenate them, and that means just putting them together to form a longer string. Let's say I have a variable called name. Let's make that Jake. If we wanted to output hello name, um, assuming we don't know what name is and that's set dynamically, we can say echo and have a string hello, close the, the quotes to close the string, and then use a dot, a full stop, a period, whatever you want to call it, to concatenate that string to the string name. Don't forget the semicolon, and that will output hello Jake. So then, of course, we could easily change the name without changing the, the second line, and it would output hello Bob instead. We've already seen a few operators. Plus sign is the addition operator, which can take two operands, for example, five and three, and add them together. Equally, you can do subtract, uh, forward slash for divide, and an asterisk for multiply. Equals is the assignment operator. The variable on the left will get set to the expression, which is on the right. Comparison operators, if we want to check that two variables are equal, uh, we use a double equals sign. So if the variable x is equal to the variable y, this expression will return true, otherwise it will return false. If we want to check that they are not equal, uh, we can put an exclamation mark in. Exclamation mark in PHP means not. We have logical operators, so we can say x and y which will return true if x is true and y is true. In the same way we have or, uh, which will return true if x is true or if y is true or if both are true. And of course there are many more operators but we're not going to look at those now. Instead we're going to use some logical operators and take a look at if statements. So just as an example I'm going to create a variable called logged in and I'm going to set this equal to true. I can then say if logged in is equal to, remember the double equals, true. Then we use curly brackets. We can output into a string. So remember the quotes, you were logged in. And the semicolon on the end. After the closing curly bracket, type else and open some more uh, curly brackets. This is what we'll execute if logged in is not true. We can type please log in. Refreshing our page, it says you are logged in because I have logged in set to true. If I change it to false, it is going to execute this section of the code and say please log in. So that's a basic if statement. We start with the word if. We have an expression in brackets so we can say something along the lines of variable, the, the comparison operator for equality. And then true or false or we could we could have a string in there if, if logged in was set to yes for example. Then we have curly brackets code which will execute if this expression returns true and then else code which will execute if this expression returns false remembering semicolons at the end of lines and curly brackets for the if and else so you now know how to output something to the page using echo we're now going to look at how to handle html forms again i just have a basic html file set up here and we're going to use the, the HTML form tag. So in our form, uh, this could be a login form for example, but we're just going to put an input and we're going to have the type as text and then we're going to have another input which will be submit. Refreshing our page we get a, a text box and a submit button. So the, when this form submits at the moment it, it won't do anything. If however we add an action to the, the form tag, and we set the action equal to process.php. It will send all of the information uh, from the form to a file called process.php, which we will create in a few seconds. And we can either post the information or to the page, or we can put the information in the URL. Uh, post is what you will probably want for most scenarios. So sorry, we want method equals post. Visually, nothing will change, but when we submit, it will try to go to process.php. So we're going to post the data to process.php and to be able to access this data we need to give our input some names. Let's, let's give this the name name because we want the user to input their name. So we can say enter your name. So the user enters their name and presses submit. We then create process.php. So I've created a new file, normal HTML tags saved it with the name process.php in the same directory as index.php. You want to insert the, the PHP tags, open and close, and inside we can now get the data which has been posted to this page. So we can create a variable called name, 
and uh, to access the post data we need to use the special variable dollar underscore then in capital letters post now this is an array now we haven't looked at arrays yet but don't worry all you need to do is use square brackets and inside the square brackets put a string with the name of the the input that you want and remember we called we called the input name just there if if i typed asdf there instead we would be typing asdf here that's not the case we've called it name echo just as we did before a string hello concatenation operator and then the variable name so now when you enter your name and click submit the process.php page will be loaded the data will be posted to it the php script will be able to get the the posted data from the dollar underscore post variable and it can then output that data so i mentioned the data was in the form of an array so let's just have a quick look at what an array is let's say we wanted to store details about lots of different people we could have lots of variables person one equals alice person two equals bob etc this is creating lots of different variables with lots of different names. What we can do instead is create an array, so we can maybe call this array people and set it equal to the word array, and then some normal round brackets inside this array. We can we can add Alice in quotes, comma, then we can add Bob, then we can add Catherine, and then we can add the semicolon, of course, at the end of the line. So now we have a, the people array. This array contains three strings. Alice, Bob, and Catherine. First of all, let's output the whole array. We can do this with the print underscore r function. So print underscore r is the name of the function. Open and close brackets and inside give it the, the name of the array. So go back to index.php and we've got an array. The, the zeroth element, it's zero based, is Alice. The first element is Bob and the second element is Catherine. So instead of outputting the whole array, we could echo a particular element. So let's echo the second element. So just as we did with the, the post variable, we use square brackets and we can say 2 for the second element. This is going to be Catherine, remember, because it starts with the number 0. So now we just get the, the name Catherine. So that's a simple array. An array could have integers instead, inside, instead of strings. But let's just stick to the people array for now and have a look at loops. Now, I find the most useful loop in PHP is the for each loop. So we can type for each, and this is used to loop through an array. So we can have for each, and we're going to type people as dollar person, open and close curly brackets. So what this means is for each element in the people array, execute the following code, but let the, the variable person be equal to the current element in the array. So we can output person to add a, a space. We can use single or double quotes for strings. And we've got a, a, a string with a space inside. This is just going to output each name. So what it's doing is it's taking the people array, it, it goes through it until there are no elements left. So the first time this code runs, person will be set to Alice, so I'll output Alice then a space. It'll loop through the code again and set person to the second element, or element number one, which is Bob. It'll then loop through the code a third time and set the person variable to Catherine, and then there are no more elements in the array so it will continue executing normally. So if we if we create an array called numbers and in this array we have the numbers 5, 3 and 7. Let's say we want to add up these numbers. First we can set a variable called sum and equal set it equal to 0. Then we can say for each numbers as number. Now you can you can call this variable anything you want. First variable is the name of the array. We can say sum and set it equal to the current value of sum plus the current number, the current element in the array which we are processing. Then afterwards we can echo sum. So we should expect 15 if this adds up correctly. And yes we get 15. Sum starts at 0, it loops, first it loops through and finds 5 and it does 0 plus 5 which will give us 5. So sum is now equal to 5, it'll loop through again and find 3, it'll do 5 plus 3 and give us 8. Sum is now equal to 8, it'll loop through a third and final time and find 7 and do 8 add 7 which gives us 15, sum is now equal to 15, we echo 15, the user sees 15 and as I mentioned right at the beginning, if we view the source, all the user sees is 15. It's as though we've just typed 15 straight into the HTML document. So that's a really quick basic introduction to PHP. I hope you've understood and I hope you have fun practicing. Stay tuned for some more advanced tutorials. Thanks for watching.